cardioversion is the application of a brief electrical current across the chest wall and is used to treat a variety of both supraventricular and ventricular tachydysrhythmias. Cardioversion is generally reserved for patients who display signs of clinical instability, such as chest pain, pulmonary edema, lightheadedness, or hypotension. Examples of tachydysrhythmias amenable to cardioversion include supraventricular tachycardia, atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter with a rapid ventricular response, and ventricular tachycardia with pulses. Patients with pulseless ventricular tachycardia are managed according to the ACLS ventricular fibrillation pulseless ventricular tachycardia algorithm and thus should be defibrillated instead of cardioverted. Defibrillation is covered in a separate chapter. In many situations, patients with stable tachydysrhythmias may be treated with antiarrhythmic medications instead of electrical cardioversion. The use of these medications is beyond the scope of this video. Prior to cardioversion, place the patient on oxygen and establish an intravenous line. Expose the patient's chest so that the monitor leads and defibrillation pads may be easily attached. First, place the monitor leads on the patient. The white electrode is placed on the right chest just below the clavicle. The black electrode is placed on the left chest and the red electrode is placed on the left chest at the anterior axillary line just below the left breast. Next, apply the defibrillation pads in the anterior posterior position if possible. Place the anterior pad to the left of the sternum below the left breast and the posterior pad on the back just below the inferior pole of the left scapula. Anterior lateral positioning may be alternatively used. Place the anterior pad to the right of the sternal margin at the second or third intercostal space and the lateral pad in the left mid-axillary line at the fourth or fifth intercostal space. Attach the cables from the defibrillation pads to the monitor cable Turn on the monitor and confirm the presence of a tachydysrhythmia. Cardioversion is a painful procedure and if the clinical situation allows, consider the use of procedural sedation prior to delivering the countershock. At this point, you must decide whether to use synchronized or unsynchronized cardioversion. In synchronized mode, the machine senses the patient's native rhythm and only discharges the electric current after a preset time delay following a QRS complex. This prevents shock delivery during myocardial repolarization, which, if it occurs, may lead to ventricular fibrillation. Synchronized cardioversion should be chosen if possible. Unsynchronized cardioversion is indicated for patients with pulseless ventricular tachycardia, polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, and in those with extreme and rapid deterioration of clinical status. To select synchronized mode, press the sync button on the front panel of the monitor. An indicator light on the button signifies that synchronization is active and the monitor will display blips on the EKG tracing to show that proper sensing of the QRS complex is occurring. Next, push the Energy Select button on the monitor to choose the appropriate output for the first countershock. The energy selected will be displayed on the monitor screen. Appropriate settings will vary depending on whether a monophasic or biphasic defibrillator is used. For the device depicted in this video, which incorporates a biphasic rectilinear waveform, 100 joules is used for the initial shock and all subsequent countershocks are 200 joules. Refer to the written portion of this chapter for recommended energy settings for other types of defibrillators. Before charging the machine, it is essential to assure that no caregivers are in direct contact with the patient to avoid being shocked themselves. Firmly announce, 
Charging defibrillator, everybody clear. Once everyone has stepped back from the patient, press the charge button and the defibrillator will charge to the selected energy. Once charging is complete, confirm that you are not in contact with the patient and firmly announce, I'm clear. Check that the other members of the resuscitation team are not touching the patient or stretcher and announce, everyone is clear. Then depress the shock button. After the machine discharges, check the resultant rhythm. If the tachydysrhythmia persists, prepare to cardiovert again, this time at a higher energy. Repeat the same sequence as used in the initial shock. Activate the sync button if desired. Confirm proper sensing of the QRS complex. Select the appropriate energy level. Clear the patient. Charge the defibrillator. Recheck to make sure that everyone is clear. And finally, deliver the counter shock. If the patient reverts to sinus or another perfusing rhythm, check for a pulse. Further treatment should then be provided according to the ACLS algorithms. If the patient remains in the tachydysrhythmia, further counter shocks and or pharmacologic therapy are indicated. Self-adhesive defibrillation pads are preferable for delivering counter shocks. But if they are not available, the defibrillation paddles may be used instead. First, apply electrode gel and distribute it evenly along the surface of the paddles. Place the anterior paddle to the right of the sternal border in the second or third intercostal space and the lateral paddle in the left mid-axillary region at the fourth or fifth intercostal space. Press down with about 25 pounds of pressure to ensure adequate contact between the paddles and the chest wall. To cardiovert, follow the same sequence as described in the previous section. Note that energy select, charge, and shock buttons may be found on the paddles, or an assistant can push the buttons on the front panel of the machine. To discharge the energy, push the shock buttons on both paddles simultaneously.